The thumbnail, just as the name suggests, is a small drawing, small little sketch that is roughly the size of your thumb. It could be a little bit larger, it could be a little bit smaller, but the goal of a thumbnail is to actually get your ideas down on paper really quickly, move things around to figure out if the composition is working or not. Typically an artist would go through several different th uh, thumbnails. Anywhere from 5 to 10 is a good range to begin to kind of get past the initial first initial um, ideas that you might have and to kind of go beyond your first impulse and find and search for an idea that actually works. So in a thumbnail, what you're looking for is the overall shapes and overall flow of the line and the overall composition. The details are kind of omitted because that's going to be done in the next stage when you actually expand the thumbnail into a larger drawing. For our first project, we are not developing a, an idea or a story like you would an illustration or a painting. What we're doing is we're kind of basically creating a grid and copying your photograph directly. So we're not um, required to do a lot of different thumbnails. In our case, for this particular project, the thumbnail is going to come in handy in arranging values and arranging the patterns that you have created in your sketchbooks to allow you to create more or less an interesting um, composition. Now, for those of you who have photographs that need to be cropped or um, backgrounds that need to be rearranged, the thumbnail is going to be very useful in figuring those things out. Now, since our final composition, our final uh, dimension, uh, is 12 inches by 10 inches. My thumbnail four times smaller than that. It actually is three inches by two and a half inches and that translates very nicely. It allows me to create half inch uh, squares that can later be blown up to our two inch squares that will give us the 12 by 10 inch final um, image. It's not a bad idea to number things, especially if you're going to go with a larger count for your uh, squares. That will allow you to um, keep track of the squares that you're working on. And you can number them uh, at the top with numbers and label maybe on the side with letters. So that way, when you go across, maybe like, you know, 3B, and on your larger composition, you can easily find that uh, square and not get lost. So this is why I have these labels here. Once you have your initial drawing out, finished and you should go more for an uh, outline, the next step is to separate your lights and darks. <clears throat> In my sample here, I'm using Bruce Lee, so there are two areas that are very black. So it's the hair and the little bit of his pants that are around his waist that we see here. A little bit of the black maybe around the eyes and the eyebrows and everything else falls within like mid grade values. So the next step in your thumbnail is to actually begin arranging the, um, the values and your patterns according to what you have already created in your sketchbooks. There are two ways to go about it. You can go ahead and directly do it and start marking your um, patterns and designs directly on the piece of, uh, on your thumbnail, just like I did here. Or you can actually preserve the initial drawing you did and arrange your values and patterns using a piece of tracing paper. So if you lay down a piece of tracing paper on top of your drawing, first thing to do is to secure it. You can put a couple of pieces of masking tape on top so it doesn't move. The next thing what you should do is register at each corner. This way, if you have several of these pieces, let's say you arranged your values and you created your patterns, but you're not really happy with it, so you're going to try another one. You can easily remove this, bring another pattern in, and then you can check between the two or three, if you're going to have a few of those, and see which values and patterns work the best. So then you can go with this. The key to this stage here is not to get overwhelmed with details. You don't want to get really detailed with the patterns that you have chosen. The idea is to quickly arrange 
the patterns that you chose for your um, that you have created in your 50 squares in your sketchbook and just arrange them in the way that the value would flow so separating values separating the light from shadows and also separating the positive area from the negative area ne positive space and negative space so once you have done this the next stage is to blow this thumbnail up so you can actually work and develop your idea further so once you have completed your initial sketch and figured things out you already know where your values are going to be you know what patterns you're going to use the next step is to actually transfer your drawing or blow it up to the actual size of um, the composition. In my case, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep it 6 inches to 5 inches. But in your case, you can actually make this to the final size, uh, which is going to be 12 by 10. And you should do this in your drawing paper, not in your sketchbook, but in your drawing pad. So once you grid your drawing, and you transfer it you can transfer it this is where the these numbers come in handy where you can easily you know work one square at a time this is basically a grid method that is used in beginning drawing classes to help you transfer and enlarge a composition or a drawing or photograph in our case to a larger um, image so you can go square by square and look carefully at what kind of shapes does each square have and transfer those shapes so you're not even thinking about you know the face don't even think about the facial features just look at the overall shapes that your photograph has and start transferring that image square by square so once you have this transferred once you have this image uh, blown up the next step is now you can come in and carefully arrange the, the patterns combined with the values of your initial thumbnail and start carefully arranging your design, or your little patterns that you have created, the 50 squares that you have created for this particular project. Remember how I said that you are creating a library of squares for the project. So now you can come back and pick and choose which patterns are going to work for which area. So for example, how do you define how do you decide which pattern is going to be suitable for a particular area? In my example here, I'm using tiny little circles and lines for the hair. But in actuality what I should have done is probably reserve those finer lines for the areas that have detail like for this area here because that would allow for a greater degree of uh, detail for example if you have a pattern that is um, large like for example if you have something that is like a, a brick you can reserve that pattern for the darker areas and in, in a pattern that is more or less detailed you can reserve that for the detailed areas this way you can have the degree of variation of value within that area so once you have completed this stage here and you have arranged your patterns and your composition looks good the next step is to transfer this to your bristol board now remember you're doing this initially in your drawing paper and the advantage of the step going from the thumbnail to this next step in designing and laying out your uh, uh, patterns and values is that you are able to carefully arrange your patterns just as you need them the next stage is transferring this to the bristol board so i'm going to take my bristol board and if you notice i already have uh, drawing that I began here and part of the reason why I'm doing this is to show you how you should always keep your drawing um, secured because once you take it off it's going to be hard for you to transfer you're going to see why 
what you're going to need is you're going to kind of create a makeshift tracing paper and you're going to create this with the tools you already have available and that's your tracing paper and a 2b or a 4b pencil now the the, the letters on the pencils indicate the hardness or the softness. So for example, the two pencils that I have here, the 4B and a 2H, the Bs refer to a softer lead. Softer lead is going to give you darker line and a thicker line, whereas the H refers to the lead being harder, thus it's going to give you a, a lighter line. The numbers indicate how hard or soft the, the pencil is. So HB is going to be a pencil that's in the middle and the, the greater the number, the farther it moves away from that middle section, the HB, and becomes either harder or softer depending on the letter you have. So taking your 2B or a 4B pencil, what you're going to do is take your drawing or your um, photograph, lay your tracing paper on top of it so you kind of know the dimensions you need. Try to cover the area this whole area that you're going to cover just using this 2B or a 4B pencil. I would not recommend going um, softer than the 4B because you will get messy during the transfer the the graphite is going to transfer onto the bristol board and it could get really really messy uh, the example i'm showing here this one i actually created with something like a 6b so it does create quite a bit of a mess so sticking with the 2b or 4b is just enough so once you cover this whole area and try to go beyond the border that you have because you want to be able to um, make good lines and good marks once you have all of that covered you're going to come you're going to be left with uh, something like this and the way this is used <clears throat> I'm just going to use my photograph instead of my actual drawing just to give you an example the way this is used you're going to lay down your uh, Bristol board you're going to lay down your tracing paper and secure it with tape so it doesn't move. You don't want this to smudge. Do leave yourself an area where you can kind of lift off and see if it's transferring. Don't secure, don't, don't put enough tape all the way around because you still want to peek underneath and see if the transfer is working. And then lay down your drawing on top of that. In this case, I'm using the photograph just for uh, demonstration purposes. Now, using a mechanical pencil, make sure you get some lead out. You can go ahead and start tracing. Now, the key to the trace is to have enough pressure on your pencil to transfer. Let me do it in the corner so we can actually see what we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to do it in the corner here. So apply enough pressure to transfer. I'm going to lift up and see because we do have a line. But you see also because of I was using a 6B for my transfer paper because that transfer paper I created for painting for, uh, for canvas. So it didn't matter if it's going to get dirty or messy because that's going to be covered with paint. But for our purposes, because we're inking, we want the paper, the, the final, to be very clean. We just want the black and white. We want the black of the ink and the white of the paper to be very clear. So notice how the line has transferred very nicely. You don't have to have a lot of pressure to transfer. Try it somewhere in the corner where, <clears throat> where the design is not going to be affected much and see just how much pressure you need to transfer that. So 
the the key is not to dig your pencil too deep so you don't want to create any grooves in your uh, bristle board and because you have now for example this was our um, actual drawing we have created your patterns you would transfer your patterns as well so this method allows you to be very precise and have a lot of control over your final composition and your final design down to the single uh, lines uh, single marks the downside or the drawback of this method is that it's going to be time consuming because you are essentially kind of doing the work twice you are um, creating the patterns here and then you're transferring to the bristle board and then you're going to be inking now for beginners this method works great because you are taking that extra step and you're not afraid to mess up your bristle board you can make your marks on here let's say you mess up you can always come back and erase things you can always move things around so you're at liberty to um, be free in your initial drawing if you were to do this directly on a bristol board and you mess up on your pattern or your mark making and you're gonna have to erase you can create smudges on the bristol board that will be visible on the final on the final piece and that's something that is we don't want to show like i said we want a very clean transfer black and white image um, once you have inked your image and you have any kind of excess uh, graphite lines we want to be able to erase that so once we have created this once you have transferred your image we're going to get to inking now for those of you who have had drawing classes or art classes before and you're confident in what you're doing you can omit that in between stage you don't have to have that tracing paper and um, creating your patterns separately in the drawing in the drawing uh, paper in your pad what you can do you can go ahead and blow this image up directly onto the bristol board and if you're going to do that make sure it doesn't look this smudgy right you want to make sure you start clean with a clean uh, bristol board and using a 2h pencil and i highly recommend using a 2h for the transfer because it's going to give you a very fine line i don't even know if you can see it on the camera maybe that second camera is able to pick it up yeah so you can kind of see the mark that the 2h leaves if you need to go darker let's say you're very light-handed and you're not seeing the line just go to the next one up it's going to be at hb and figure out the pressure that you need to uh, leave enough of the graphite but remember don't dig your pencil into the bristol board because it's going to create a little groove and it's going to be visible once you ink it you want that final image to be clean and um, flat going back to what i was saying in terms of uh, direct method the direct method as i mentioned is going from your initial design and then gridding your bristol board and enlarging it directly onto the bristol board and doing your patterns right on the bristol board by doing this you're kind of bypassing the middle stage and you're speeding the process up but again if you mess up somewhere you're gonna to have to erase a lot that might result in a smudgy area just be aware of that once you have your image transferred the next step is the inking and you can see that i already started messing with this my o5 ran out of ink so i will be using double o5 o3 and o1 the inking with micron pens is fairly easy the mark itself is restricted to you know the mark you make is going to be dictated by the size of the nib of the micron pen so in this case the o1 is going to be the most finest one and the advantage of using micron pens versus like crocal pen is that that line is going to be consistent and some people really want that consistency they want to make sure that the line is very precise 
because if we're going to be using a crow quill pen, the crow quill pen will allow for variation of line. And the microns, that line is kind of fixed, depending on the size that you're using. So you notice that I was using a 01 in this area here. I'm going to switch it to 03. <clears throat> And you're going to see the difference in the size of the line that it makes. But you see how precise that line is. So if you even slow down if you have to, you can still keep very precise lines. You see the difference between the two um, variations. So now what if you want a line that is thick and thin? What if you have a design that kind of goes from a thick line to a thin line? Well, how do you do that? You can start with the thicker line and kind of pull back on your stroke. And then once you get to the thinner area, switch to your finer 01 and try to pick up where you kind of left off. And again, using this kind of smaller strokes, you can achieve this thick and thin variation. That can be a little bit time consuming and this is why the croak wheel pen comes in very handy. Now, one of the things I do want to show you before uh, we move on, before I, I demo the croak wheel pen, the, what if you have a pattern like I have here that kind of goes beyond the square that you have created. Sometimes it's easier to kind of go beyond the square to achieve that fluidity. What you can do actually is mask out an area like this and go beyond, allow that pattern to go beyond the square itself. Because if you're doing like semicircles or, you know, this kind of circular a pattern that you might have by going beyond the, the box itself is going to create a much fluid motion. If you were to just kind of try to be very precise inside this square, that would, um, that might not actually work. So by masking this out, you're making your life a little bit easier and you're allowing for a certain degree of flexibility and you can pick up speed. And also when you're going to be inking this, that's just going to allow you for a cleaner edge. That line is going to stop there. Because remember, we are not actually going to be um, drawing the actual grid. The grid itself is going to be created by juxtaposing the two images, the two uh, things. The, these lines here we are not tracing. These lines are going to be implied lines and they're going to be created by contrast, contrast of value and contrast of shapes. So this visual implied line is going to be created uh, visually. It's not going to be a direct mark. So by masking it out, you're actually allowing yourself to just be free and work directly on the mark making and not worry about if you're gonna pass into the next um, square or not. Now if you need to make your lines a little bit thicker you would have to go go over it several times and this is why having your design initially laid out and So the advantage of a crow quill pen is um, you can create a variation of thick and thin line just in one stroke and you don't have to switch between um, micron pens, different sizes of the micron pen. The trick to the crow quill pen is controlling that line throughout.
And this is why I am not requiring this because it does take a little bit of time of practice. And in, in the past, when I did require this, and I would have students buy um, both the Crocal pans and the Micron pans, it actually, um, most students prefer to work, work with Microns because they're easily, they're much easier to control than this. So in a nutshell, that's what we're going for. And you want to make sure that you can clean off your um, pen and your nib. Uh, you can clean it with just under running water. And while it's still, the ink is still wet, you can clean that off very easily and have it ready for your next um, working session. Now, once this is dry, I'm going to try to peel this off. Hopefully it's dry. And let's see if when you're peeling the tape, you want to make sure that it's not lifting the rest of your image. So don't use old masking tape because the glue on it can damage the drawing. And when you're peeling, try to peel very carefully. So this is not a method that I would normally recommend, but it does for some students, it does work. And I had students that were using this particular method. Um, so if it works for you, just make sure you're not lifting your drawing underneath it, your um, initial drawing. Um, I would suggest trying to control everything with just by hand. But if you do need something like this, another way of doing it, another way of controlling the edge is that you can have a piece of paper that you can lay down and come uh, begin your stroke from the paper itself and then into your square this way it gives you a kind of cleaner edge so just a few different methods of inking and um, for yeah for your final project